everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We have Noemi Gonzalez on the podcast and we're talking about her new film, Undercover Holiday on Hallmark Channel. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me here, Rachel. <laughs> yes, this is so fun. So what we like to do with new guests to our podcast is get to know you a little bit. So tell us a little bit about how you got inspired to get into acting. How'd that happen? Uh, Sure thing. So essentially, I was a little girl and the upbringing I had, singing came into play. Ultimately, I thought I was going to be a music teacher uh, to follow in the footsteps of a teacher that was very inspiring to me. And I went to school, to university. And interestingly enough, a friend begged me to audition for the BFA acting program at my university. I I acquiesced (laughs) and now I'm (laughs) trained in here and um, I wouldn't be here without her. And so the acting found me through, mm-hmm. through many ways. Um, that's great. So really cool. Yeah. So on your IMDb, it said that you started doing musicals when you were growing up. Yeah. Did you have any particular standout ones, like your favorite? Well, they, they're not ones that are like particularly famous. You mm. have to be able to do like a school play that is stuck. So the kids learn, you know, we can't pay royalties at an elementary school. Sure, to, like, sure. Yeah, you know. So I mean, they were they were interestingly enough on this new project. The makeup artist left early, um, and we got our bases covered so that she could make it to her daughter's Christmas musical, Aww. also like a stock musical, so that kids can perform. You know, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's like a Hallmark movie. Exactly. In yeah. a Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the first role you ever got on camera? On camera, it has to be Soli Gomez for East Los High. Mm-hmm. yeah you, before commercials I guess yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so when you got so you did you have a callback for that one that I did. you had to do so yeah. you auditioned and then you call back did you just like freak out when you got it <laughs> you just couldn't believe it honestly like um maybe this happens to a lot of actors I've kind of heard that this kind of happens to us where we just don't realize we're so sure. in, that we just don't even realize what's going on you know uh-huh. the show was not as um illustrious at the time because it was before streaming so it Uh was a web series okay and then because of uh I knew that some networks were trying to buy it but there's some themes that we wanted to share so ultimately it became East Los High on Hulu.com but before we really didn't know what streaming was we didn't know what a digital series was so we took a chance on it so I was just it's one of those characters where, where there's certain roles you really fight for and you go through for role like in rounds uh-huh. and then there's the characters where you kind of feel like oh I think this is like I'm falling into pocket here so that's kind of how it felt for Soli Gomez that's great so you were on Young and the Restless for a couple of years yeah so what was did you have any good like dishy plots like uh oh, yeah. evil twins or any something like that Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what was your dishiest plot? My dishiest plot. Oof. How <laughs> steamy can we get here? <laughs> it, was yeah. pretty, it was pretty beautiful. I mean, um, they already had a Latina as uh, my sister-in-law there before you meet my character. So she was a very uh, virtuous woman who was, you know, really about, you know, that. And I was the 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 contrast of the confident, sensual Latina that is like this is a uh-huh. part of life. Yeah. It was a part of reclaiming who you are and how yeah. you love and true intimacy. So it was really fun to get to play that. And ultimately I show up and, and for all intents and purposes, it's essentially almost a villain vibe because, you know, everyone was getting used to my husband that I'm separated from with a hero that's been established on the show for a very long time. Uh-huh. And then I show up and I'm fighting for my husband again. And so, um, that happens and so I'm I'm written uh, or I'm seen as very evil but then you it's kind of one of those characters where you like understand yeah. you're in your position so yeah. ultimately you think that I'm this hussy you know that's just doing yeah. this and then I'm falling for his brother but the true story as it unfolds oh the, the brother was my my high school sweetheart boyfriend first he broke my heart and then his brother stepped in and then now so now we're married so it was just this convoluted (laughs) long history which provides time for drama to ensue yeah and I know working on those soaps is super intense you have like tons of pages every day that you have to do yes yes indeed (laughs) (laughs) I was doing six 
when I joined, I didn't know that the schedule was bumped up. So typically the show does five episodes in four days, which is a lot because, you a know, lot. viewers want, you know, to see their episode daily, Monday through Friday. And ultimately when I joined, we were filming six episodes in four days and I was not used to the culture of this fast paced model shooting. And so, I mean, I feel like I was able to handle it, but it was definitely very, <laughs> very, um, very, very challenging to, you know, just stay on my, my feet and toes and get used to the culture. Filming for soap multi-cam is different than mm -hmm. filming for a steady cam single shots. Um, so it was, it was definitely um, an amazing, amazing training ground that has served me in other projects. And yeah. I, I bet that helps you with, cause I know these Hallmark movies are pretty intense too. They mm -hmm. shoot pretty quick, but yeah. working on the soap probably helps. Immensely, immensely. It's, um, so much content that we're on, on TV period, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so this, um, it's amazing that we have so much options and you just keep watching and have like, Oh, I remember this one or whatnot. But oh, yeah, yeah, we have three weeks shooting and for my character for the newest, um, for undercover holiday coming out December 4th, I was acting, singing, dancing stunts for three weeks. So this is the first time that I actually got sick while on production. If I, if I get sick, it's after because my oh, body's no. You can relax now, yeah. you know, whereas this time um, for the first time and no one knew until my manager called to check in and, and the director called to make sure I had the choreography for a performance. And when they heard my voice, they were like, oh, my God, are you OK? Like, when did you get sick? And, and it was like yesterday. And I just, oh, they, no. didn't, they didn't know. But I was fine. I mean, I just was like, oh, Larry, I just need my soup. And like, <laughs> but it wasn't COVID. No, right? no, it wasn't yeah. COVID. It wasn't COVID. We tested. It was just um, clearly from um, being jet lagged, traveling right away, had a lot, you know, so and, and knowing that the shoot was going mm -hmm. to be very tight and um, really helped me to have that training ground before to make sure that I can give them takes that were, you know, great right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like common colds are still a thing. They haven't gone mm -hmm. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they know. <laughs> From the creator of the number one Christmas podcast comes a new book to surprise and delight you into a happier holiday season. Christmas Past, the fascinating stories behind our favorite holidays traditions by Brian Earle is out now just in time for the holidays. Available in hardcover and ebook from Lions Press and as an audiobook narrated by the author from recorded books, behind every Christmas tradition is a story, often a forgotten one. When we pour the eggnog and trim the tree, we're continuing generations old narratives without knowing their starting chapters. Until now. Brian Earl brings the same wide-eyed fascination and cozy nostalgia from the podcast to the book. Featuring 26 short chapters and eye-catching graphics, you'll want to have it on your coffee table or mantle all season long. Find out why Apple Books named Christmas Past a must-listen and get a copy today wherever books are sold. Remember, it makes a great gift. Find out more at christmaspastpodcast.com. That's christmaspastpodcast.com. Well, you were on the Selena series mm -hmm. and that must have been a fun uh, show to be a part of just the spectacle of it all and everything. Sure was. Yes. It was uh first time getting the rock star vibes. Yeah. Playing, like, playing Selena's sister drummer or originally her like um, road manager, the, mm -hmm. the stage manager of it all, the person that's doing merch, you know, from even yeah. back in the day when, when they didn't have someone else running it and now she still runs it she's at Quintanilla so it was really cool to do a period piece because it is mm -hmm. set from 80s to 90s and also yeah. have rock and roll um, experience of going up up those steps to get onto the stage and performing and, mm -hmm. and you know, perform the drums specifically which is such a yeah musical demanding uh, musically demanding instrument and and it's Selena's music so it's just incredible <laughs> did you know how to play the drums at all or did you have to kind of take lessons a little bit before I did not know how to play the drums before so the production was kind enough to offer me um rehearsals Monday and Friday for an hour and I would rehearse every day at least twice a day before and after rehearsal if if I could you know so it was up to me to make sure that ultimately um, I was ready. And so mm -hmm. that was another demanding um, experience that got me prepared so that everything else feels lighter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be surreal. I mean, were you a big fan of Selena and her music before, or were you getting introduced? Oh yeah. no, no, I was in. I was a fan of Selena before the movie. I watched mm-hmm. her. I watched her grow before she was more steadily famous. So I, I really followed her, and I remembered watching her in Sabado Gigante and being like, "Look at her makeup and her star right now!" Like she clearly, I saw the trajectory before she then was starting to cross over more and doing, um, I guess, more uh, aware. More people were more aware of her English crossover right. abilities. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was a huge, huge fan beyond measure. Very connected to that family, in in ways that uh, we got to connect on later when we got to together. That's so cool. All right. Well, let's talk about Undercover Holiday. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit about the movie? Sure. Undercover Holiday is the story that follows Jaylen during the holidays. And she just won a talent show competition in Los Angeles. And she's going back to her small town. But this time she has to go with the bodyguard because it's needed from the label. And when I get to my sleepy town, I need to have the ruse that he's my boyfriend because I don't want my family to be terribly worried during the holidays. So ultimately you get to watch the hilarity and the heartwarming holiday spirit ensue with this, uh, you know, this cover between pop star, new artist and bodyguard necessities meeting the holidays. (laughs) Well, that sounds really fun. We're a big fan of the writer of the movie nina wyman she's mm-hmm. a legend yes she is an incredible <laughs> talented woman she was our very first interview we ever had on oh the podcast, that's beautiful back in 2017 yeah well so. i really honor that that's really cool that you put focus on the writer because we're, we're only as good as the writing you yeah. know oh, yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah uh and uh so how did you get involved in the project did they come to you or, or they yeah. did come to me and it was the first time they that someone's come to me so i was i was in a yeah, it was in a time in my life where I was like, whoa, like I've never had that before. And then, you know, they just called to my agent, then called for my manager to tell me the good news. And then he's like, the email will come. I really was in disbelief. I really didn't mm-hmm. believe that it was actually the truth because I'm so used to the casting process being initial audition or self tape, right? Call back, maybe a couple rounds, then waiting on screen test deals and, and whatnot approval from network studio and this was this was them coming to me and it was a really humbling experience and yeah so that was that was a uh, awesome because I, I essentially still cast the casting of Hallmark is incredible they're, they clearly know what they're doing and and it's nice because they they expedite the time for them and for their end of production and for you know as the actor and and director and and all all that that comes into play for getting a family on screen so it was really cool to witness someone who clearly must have seen all of our work to know who's going to be the brother who's going to be the sister who's going to be whatnot and then when we're there we're like whoa 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 we're yeah we just found a pocket like we're clicking you know yeah that's cool that's nice when that chemistry is just effortless oh yeah 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 totally happens more often than not but Mm -hmm. it's just just and and if not, there's always professionalism, you know, so sure, it's, it's yeah. beautiful that, that we, we can work that out and someone at the top really knows what they're doing. <laughs> Did you have much time in between when you got the offer and when you went to shoot? I know sometimes it's pretty quick. Yeah, no, I was still three weeks notice three. and then I was out for, a, and then I, then I was flown out within a week and I was moving. Oh and my so, gosh. Um, yeah, it was really, um, okay, here we go, doo, doo, which is, you know, um, <laughs> which is part of our, our lifestyle that's non-traditional yeah. actor crew member lifestyle of quick we need you we need you now and yeah. get it and I, I wrote some of the some stuff um on the flight there <laughs> for the character for the story oh so. really yeah yes yes have you seen it at all by chance or no I haven't gotten to see it yet no, no. Worries, no worries I was just watching it and oh, I really part of some some details so it's going to be uh, fun to get to watch that and, and see what oh, the cut. I'm the excited. Final cut. Yeah. So you did, you did uh, music for the, in the movie, you sang in the movie? I sang, I danced. Oh my uh, gosh. I may or may not um, have a little more of an urban element in there. We'll see what uh-huh. the final lock cut is. <laughs> and that's what I wrote. I, I wrote that part of a, of a verse, if it, if it makes the ah. cut. It was really cool to be flying to Toronto and to be really um, wrapped in the story enough to write 
averse and to um, not just be associating with my hero story, but with um, my fellow heroes in the, in the story. So it was really yeah. cool to have that channeling mm-hmm. in character. Um, never had that before. So. Yeah, that's so cool. So you, <laughs> you got to not only sing, but sing your own lyrics. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was that was really beautiful, and I give complete credit to to Jeff, especially to to Bradley Walsh, our director, Jeff, our, our producer, and and Bradley, our director, and Nina. Certain ele- this is a, a lot of Mexican American elements are in this, and Nina was so welcoming to I would wouldn't dare to give her a heads up about anything with all of her legendary capabilities that she she has um, with the pen, but ultimately mm-hmm. to get the nuance of culture that is so specific to a Mexican background. It was beautiful to see how, um, accom- not accommodating, but how uh, curious they were and how willing they were to make sure that this felt heartfelt for everyone and also a learning experience for everyone that can enjoy this. Yeah. So uh, it was be... really beautiful on their part to support it and and let me express myself this way to really bring Jalen's story alive and the entire undercover holiday experience alive. It's been so nice this year. We've had so much more inclusion and diversity on the channel, you know, with like things like the golden Christmas, the golden dragon, you've got like a Chinese family, you have, uh, they, they've had just a number of different, you've got the holiday stocking coming out, which is a mahogany movie. Uh, you've got a Kwanzaa movie coming out. I just, I really, it makes it more fun to have the variety. It, it makes it more fun. And isn't it? <laughs> literally the phrase that is uh really apt in the holidays is the more the merrier yeah absolutely. So, so like why not have um variation and and yeah. you know holidays are all about you know no one being alone during that time and and welcoming people in and and not having you know making sure that there's there's someone that always has some warmth during this this time of year and so to make sure everyone feels welcomed is just a really beautiful thing that Hallmark is doing that I'm doing with Undercover Holiday and especially what I'm doing right now while I'm filming on the west coast of Canada now. So it's it's a real impressive feat that they're doing and they're doing so well by by having uh, studio execs and, and writers and directors that are curious and supportive of these backgrounds. So yeah, I can't let that fall. So you are doing another Hallmark movie right now? Uh, homework something. I can't, oh. really, <laughs> can't, oh. can't get into too many details about yes. it, but it's a homework something. Yeah. All so right. I'm this really honored good. that I I got I I went from um Toronto to now um yes. Victoria. So yeah. and I'm I'm definitely having a very Canada <laughs> uh fall winter before I celebrate the holidays with my family. Oh. So it's really beautiful to have so much the same you know I'll notice you start talking like Canadian saying like oh, I'm no. sorry yeah there was yeah, no in in what was it was it this one now I don't remember if it was this one or the, or, or the other one but ultimately in a, in a scene in one of my characters I'm like I am so sorry <laughs> I am so sorry like I immediately like it like corrected it like within the tape yeah I was like Jalen's or I'm pretty sure oh no either way my character's not Canadian so I was just like (laughs) I'm starting to sound like my crew members because you know actors you know we're such sponges and parents yeah that we start blending and adapting to wherever we're at so I had to correct that right away (laughs) ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the Hallmarkies Patreon do you love Hallmarkies podcast especially at Christmas Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. 
That's patreon.com slash homeworkies. We kind of joke when we're watching the movies, we're like, oh, his Canadian is showing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> so you're matched with Stephen Huzar in this movie and we mm-hmm. love him. He's been on yes. the podcast before. So when you get us, when you get assigned with him, is there anything that you do to kind of build that chemistry at all or, or make that work? With him or with anyone, um, I typically like to have a family dinner with my cast. That's my family. And uh-huh. with him, when he, I knew he landed, I said, hi, and I would love to get, you know, dinner or drinks. And while we got dinner and drinks to just get to know each other, which is enough sure. to do before a set, like before a set day, there's so much going on. And then you're just channeling in character as opposed to just like, so Ibrahim, what's going on? And then after a while, probably at dessert was when we finally got to like, so what are you thinking for our characters or the story? Like, what do you, you know, what was your questions for the, our dynamic and whatnot? So um, the fact that he was willing to have that time with me is beautiful. And most, most actors do, because it's a lot of fun because, you know, a lot of the work is um, written for us and a lot of the fun's there and the fun is in discovering things on set. But a lot of that comes more organically when we've had that time, you know, so mm-hmm. yeah. that's how I try. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. It's kind of like a bodyguard type situation, but without it being a thriller, you know, and this, the. Oh, it totally you know, like... is. <laughs> the way I've described it to people, if I may, is, uh, <laughs> It's the bodyguard with Whitney Houston, but it's through a Mexican American yeah, person there we go. at a Hallmark, you know. Yeah, so yeah. And a little more comedy in there, of course, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you film this in the summer? Was it like super hot? I'm I'm thankful to say we filmed this in the fall of oh, Toronto. So uh, you know, I'm, I've heard that um I, I have sensitivity to wool. So I brought that up to wardrobe ahead of time. So uh, they told me that you know so many actors are doing these in the summer and they're wearing like wool and a, and then a leather jacket and then a coat and then and so luckily I've been filming in conditions that uh that uh it, I, I loved it I love the weather everyone's like oh you got terrible weather when you land and I'm like I actually love it because I think I try to wear fall clothing in yeah. LA but I I you know so ultimately I got to wear that but then I'll, I'm almost only there for the fast-paced shoot of three weeks so I get to come in and out Mm-hmm. So, um, ultimately, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Cause sometimes they have to have like ice packs and stuff like that in between yeah, in the I'm, coats. <laughs> I've never done ice pack. I've done those, the, the, hot, the hand warmers, but I've never yeah. done ice pack. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, as a, someone who also has curly hair, I love your curly hair. And uh, oh. do you have a secret you can, t- you can share with us for getting good curls? Absolutely. Um, you need to have the right uh, products in your shampoo and conditioner. Mm-hmm. You need to most more than anything, make sure that there's no parabens, no sulfates, is that sulfates. It's like, am yeah. I thinking? Or am I thinking? <laughs> um, so ultimately make sure that it's um, an, an experiment. Um, ultimately I use a, a really affordable brand that I get from Amazon, That's but nice. every time that I, I use it, I see a difference. If I use you know, something else mm-hmm. that has those chemicals, and um, when I come in to like do my nails so that I can be ready for set because they asked me to go get my nails so so we can keep painting them for retouches, I come into the salon and they're like, you're having a good hair day. And I <laughs> ultimately, the trick for me is that this is somewhat a perm. So I wake up because I'm Selena, I, I had to have a perm and it's growing out from that, okay. that role still. So um, I'm a very big component of um, doing services that make me feel that they, they're more an investment for long term. So when I wake up, I just have to retouch maybe three, four strands from the sleep that I had and then go. And so yeah. people think that like I, I you know, um, having a super good hair day or went to a salon when, um, yeah, the tricks are definitely to make sure you have your good products and good services that make yeah. it easier for you to feel your best every day. <laughs> wow, it looks great. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. 
Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. Oh, all right. Well, we have some fun holiday questions to ask you. Okay. First question. What is your favorite holiday drink? Oh, how far a holiday drink? Tequila. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's chupurado. It's chupurado for sure. All right. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Tamales. Mm. Pozole. Yeah. So you like it savory? Yes. Yes. Um, Yes. Ultimately, the sweet, well, the chumpurado from the drink, Uh there's a balance between that and a buñuelo, um, bonillo, sorry, that that is a very like, um, it's like a churro variation, but instead of it's a tortilla that's fried. Oh, okay. and, but it's fried and then sugar's dusted on it. And then you dip that into a, a thick hot chocolate that's Mexican and um, it's delicious. So that would be a treat, but I, I can't say that without having a tamal or, or a bowl of pozole first. Like it's, mm-hmm. those are expected during the holidays. <laughs> I like the pozole or I guess it's not pozole. It's the um, menudo that has mm-hmm. the tripe in it. I don't right. like that. No, I don't either. <laughs> my, mom, my mom never made it. I've only had it when I've needed it for like, I'll have the broth. Yeah, the broth I'm, is good. I'm big on texture. Um, it's supposed to be very healthy for you, but it's a bit much for me. So yeah. I, I I didn't grow up having that as much because my mom didn't like it either. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sol is the one to go with. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? <laughs> my favorite Christmas song or carol? I butcher songs because <laughs> I'm my brain is kind of wired bilingually. So uh-huh. I'm like my mom where I think I know I, I said the lyrics right when I don't. So like I, I'm singing this incorrectly, but I, I tend to sing it like this. Christmas time. <laughs> it's <all> the time. <laughs> like yeah, that's from, that's from uh, Charlie Brown. Yes. And so yes. I, I didn't grow up watching it. I only grew up <laughs> hearing it. And so now I'm thinking that I'm singing it correctly. And now it's my way. And now people <laughs> jokingly in the house when I see Christmas, I, I have certain isms and they repeat them back to me. And that's yeah. one that they, like jokingly tease. But I also do like, like I'll be on set today and I'll be like, din, 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 din. <laughs> and I'll do the whole like, ah. Carol the bells. Yeah. Yeah. I'll you do got the it. whole instrumentation vocally. <laughs> 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 that one I get right. That one I get. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Which is, I mean, all right. What is your favorite classic Christmas movie? The Grinch. Like the Ron Howard one, the Jim Carrey? The Jim Carrey. Okay. The Grinch. Because truth be told, I, I grew up Jehovah's Witness. And mm. so being an actor who, um, and my, but my extended family did celebrate Christmas. And so it was always an interesting experience for me um, being in my home home with the, my nucleus family and going to my grandma's house where all my cousins, my primos and primas are celebrating there. And so ultimately the Grinch feels like uh, it encompasses that mm. experience. Well, you're going to have an easy answer to the next question then. Which do you like better, Scrooge or the Grinch? Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> you're a mean one. <laughs> Mr. Grinch. Very yeah, good. Uh, which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Colored. Okay. Would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? A snowball fight. (laughs) (laughs) Do you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? I'm an excellent gift. Good. I'm an excellent gift wrapper. That music teacher, we didn't have money to go to a, an event. So we uh, volunteered to gift wrap and that's how I learned to be a good gift wrapper for for the holiday here on now. So give, they used to give me the challenging, like (laughs) obtuse ones. And I'd be like, I got you. (laughs) <laughs> you're like I got the corners just right it's, it's I even fun. envelopes or bags out of the wrapping paper I, I go on Pinterest and remind myself how to make them and I have fun with it <laughs> <laughs> all right last question do you have an ugly Christmas sweater I don't I don't but I gave a friend like a Chris a Santa dabbing like dab okay. on Santa. yeah but that's that's the recent one that's in my life <laughs> okay good <laughs> Well, very good. You answered all the questions. Yay! <laughs> I love really your looking- outfit, by the way. Very festive. <laughs> Thank you. We're <laughs> looking forward to this, to the new movie. It's going to be super fun. I'm glad you have a 
have you a part of the Hallmark family. And I uh, thanks so much for coming to talk with us. No, thank you for having me. It's Rachel. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have social media or anything like that you want to share? Sure thing. I, I'm most active on Instagram and I am Noemi Gonzalez. I am Noemi Gonzalez. And I think on TikTok, I'm the Noemi Gonzalez. And so I'll be posting some BTS there more, Great. more frequently. <laughs> Great. Well, we'll look forward to that. And uh, thanks again. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Very Merry Christmas to you too. Thanks guys. Hi. <laughs> I'd like to thank Nomi for coming on the podcast. This is so much fun to get to know her, talk with her. Let us know what you think of all the different things we talked about in the comment section or on Twitter. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, you can follow the Homeworks podcast, all of our social media. We're still having our problem with Facebook. Uh, so don't follow us on there, but we have Twitter and, and Instagram and other ways to follow us. If you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really really helps us a lot. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. So take a look at that. That helps us so, so much. And uh, thanks again to Emmy and we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas.